Hi, this is Dr. Darwin, the new dentist coach, with another episode of Ask Dr. Darwin on the new dentist podcast show, where you ask questions about getting into dental school, about getting into residency and life after residency. Be sure to hit the subscribe button that you see here. Push that bell, hit those notifications so that you don't miss the weekly videos that come out. Also, be sure if you have any questions, uh, you can always shoot me an email right here at New Dentist Coach g at gmail.com new dentist coach at gmail.com today today we're going to be talking about some advice uh, for dental school applicants especially for those students pre-dental students that are thinking about dentistry and are uh, either a junior or a senior in dental school getting ready to apply to dental school so we're going to talk about some tips we got five or six tips and some advice for applicants and we are with a current applicant who's getting ready to start apply, Miss Lauren Jordan. Hey, Lauren. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So tell everybody a little bit about yourself. So I am currently a junior. Um, I intend to apply this cycle. Um, again, my name is Lauren Jordan, and um, I am a junior at St. John's University, and I'm just like looking for some guidance on some um, different things in my um, route to, in my application, um, just some courses in, in preparation for my exams and different materials. So, uh, okay, good, good. And how did you find out about me? I actually found out through um, a friend, her mother connected uh, me and highly recommended that I get in contact with you. So yes. That's Here good. I That's good. So for you, those of you that are listening, uh, that is a way to, for us to connect through somebody that knows somebody that knows me or knows them or, or again, you can always send me an email at newdentistcoach at gmail.com. So let's talk about your journey into dentistry as relates to where you are right now and what questions you have. So yes, I'm currently in the process. I just began um, DAT prep with um, my course with Kaplan. So that is an online live course. And that course I think is about a six or eight weeks. So it's twice a week um, online live for three hours. And it's kind of just like goes through the different sections. Um, and I would say that's more of a guided in terms of like what to key in on in those particular sections but it's more of a self um, pace and practice. So once you master this, it gives you maybe five sections in the sciences. So it's just basically based off of your repetition. And um, I've kind of been trying to find different resources that people recommend that are better for different things. Like I've um, heard about chats, videos, um, about the boot camp, like so different things um, that are better for different sections. Um, and I'm currently in the process of also, um, taking different visits to some schools. So different schools that have like a day in your, a day in the life or impressions days, depending on what they title them. And just like reaching out to admissions just to get a feel, um, and especially for myself as an applicant and then just doing my best to keep my grades up in school here and then preparing um, pretty much an outline of who I will be asking and I've asked some already for um, recommendation letters and then I'm still um, shadowing here um, an office here in New York so yeah wow so <laughs> don't sound like you need too much more advice I mean you've you've pretty much have laid out a lot of the things that are recommended and are and are actually doing a lot of the things that you need to get done uh, as you're getting as you're getting prepared for this upcoming cycle. So, like the pat the the prep class, awesome. Got to do that. That was my going to be my first thing of advice. If you guys are listening and you're not, you don't have a prep course or something that's structured and guided. Um, that's a that's a big mistake. You, I mean, for many of us applying to dental school, we've never taken the DAT before. We've taken other tests but you haven't taken the DAT before. So you need to um, be familiar with that test. And if that means getting a tutor or paying extra money to buy a course, that's what you got to do. You got to be willing to do whatever it takes. And that's what it takes to score well on that exam, because that score is going to be 
basically that score is going to be your ticket. It's going to be your ticket to, to be able to get in to dental school, but also get it, get, well, mainly get interviews. The more interviews you get, the more that you increase your opportunities and possibly the more um, offers that you get for scholarships as well. So that DAT is very important. So you're already doing that already right. So that's great. Um, you mentioned the second thing about going to a day in the life or some type of impressions day. Another great piece of advice to be able to connect with students, right? You really, really want to connect with those students because not only are they, have they um, just gone through what you've been going through last year or two years ago, but they also know a little bit about some of the admissions and, and the application process, the interviewing, um, whether they be members of organizations like the SNDA or DIA or ASDA or AAWD, which is American Association of Women Dentists. You wanna be connected with those students. Um, and, and you definitely, definitely and must go to those types of uh, what they're called impressions days where you actually go to the school and uh, meet people, hear speakers, and, and do network. You got to network. You got to network. So if you guys are not doing that, that, that are listening, that's another mistake, another big mistake that can ruin your chances of getting into dental school. Um, what else did you say? Uh, another good advice which you meant that you're doing already is, like you said, talking to admissions directors. Uh, and getting a chance to get in front of them so that they can learn more about you, but meet you, but also so that you can ask certain questions and, and they can actually put a face to your application that's coming. That's so important because these admissions directors, they get so many applications. They get maybe thousands, two thousands of applications for, you know, maybe 60, 70, 80, or maybe 100 spots. So whatever you can do to increase your likelihood of getting an interview, but making those admissions uh, committee want to have you come in for an interview, whatever you can do that's gonna increase your chances, that's what you wanna do. And getting in front of them and talking to them and networking with them um, is very, very important. Um, and it's good that, you know, the fourth thing that you're doing that's good is getting, lining up those letters of recommendation people that you're working with, people that have worked with you and, and know about you as, as far as your personality. They probably are, should already know that you're interested in going to apply to dental school, right? So you want to make sure, one tip though, when you're asking for those letters of recommendation, you want to ask them to see if they can write a very strong, very strong letter, right? A very strong letter of recommendation. You don't need anything lackluster. You don't need anything that's uh, a B or B minus. You want A and A plus and outstandings and, and excellence and um, all of that. So that's 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 cool. that's key. Um, you mentioned shadowing. That would be the fifth thing. Shadowing, getting those experiences, observing Dennis in action. Uh, one of the things that's good about networking with students is that depending on where they are in dental school, you can shadow with them. Definitely. Yep, you can shadow with them. Or if you have some people or a friend of the family or even your own dentist, if you can shadow uh, her or him in the office. And uh, I know we had a question that came up not too long ago. People were asking about shadowing and how some places don't document the amount of hours that you did and, and that was a problem. So just make sure that when you're shadowing that you are, you're grateful, you're thankful, and that you let them know thank you for, you know, in writing, thank you for allowing me to shadow. And maybe hopefully, you know, let them know that you need some type of documentation just to say that you are here. Uh, one idea is to have them write you a thank you letter, say thank you, Lauren, for, you know, spending the time in our office these last three weeks for, you know, every day for these last three weeks. And that'll give an out, you know, that'll get uh, right. allow you to to calculate a number as far as hours as as um, a number of hours that you need. I think it's some schools went over a hundred hours of shadowing or something similar to that. But there's a reason for that. They want to make sure that you 
see the ins and outs of a day-to-day -day practice and have an idea as to what you're going to be doing not only in dental school but afterwards as well um, and i think the the last thing as far as advice is um you know the grade yeah you got to maintain your grades as you're studying you know the two things that the two important things that schools look at is gpa right especially your science gpa and your dat so you got to keep those up to par if not superb to make sure that you're getting recognized uh, by schools so that you can go to the next step which is get an interview got to get an interview before you can get into dental school so that's really what you're doing all this for you you're doing this so you can get an interview so you put your application together and, and and do an interview the only thing i didn't hear you mention was personal statement i know that's coming along anyway and you've done a couple of those as relates to some other programs some summer programs that you've been a part of so uh, i would just emphasize again 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 you know why you why why dentistry and, and how you feel that you are connecting with people and why you want to be a part of the profession and it could be from you know share an experience share a story of you um, getting exposed to dentistry that's going to be key i think as well and uh, just highlight some of the you know strong qualities about yourself and all of that will come come out in the next step which is the uh the interview but i mean quite honestly lauren i i, I think you know you're definitely way ahead of a lot of people who are just starting out on this process or who have um, done this process and i would just say keep focusing on the, these six things and um, especially the DAT. The next thing you're gonna have to start doing if you haven't already is making the list, making a list of schools. Um, and you did something really, really great this past weekend where we connected at, in Chicago, which was mm -hmm. the idea of dental recruitment fair where there were over 60, 60 dental schools that uh, you were able to interact with face-to-face network meet admissions directors for over three four hours they had some other workshops that were there so uh you did that so I, I again i mean you're you're crossing the t's dotting the i's and and just doing everything that you need to do and more to make sure that you're the best applicant a strong applicant and that you've got everything covered um for this upcoming cycle So anything else I can help you with or initially? Because I mean, um, you, you're doing everything. You're doing everything right, all right. <laughs> no, I was just gonna ask you um, something that like um, came back to mind. You know, like you said, you want someone to um, write a letter. You know, that is very colorful and it speaks volumes. And I know they collect like here for a committee letter. So it's like you compile your different ones um, from different professors. But my main concern is, and not to discredit, you know, um, any of, not to discredit the science program or any of the professors I've had, but you know how you can feel people out and you kind of get that lackluster. You don't get that all the way and it's pretty much cookie cutter. This is what it is. And despite how much effort you've shown to them put in, you don't feel like they can write a letter to the to a point that you know would impress somebody yep big t time out take them off throw them away you need a strong letter otherwise you don't want something that's that's lackluster right right you want that person that's writing for you to be a raving fan like they have nothing else but good excellent great things to say about you um from from the first word to the last paragraph so go with your gut on that go with your gut on that and and and, and get someone that knows you um you know, maybe somebody through that summer program that you did, right? Uh, and so would you say, because I know they, a lot of them do ask for um, a science professor, that you can ask for a science professor from a summer program? Why not? Did, okay. I mean, did, did you take science at that summer program? Yes. 
there you go. <laughs> right? And it happened while you were in school, right? Yes. There, there you go. Okay. Yeah, again, you want nothing but strong, strong, excellent, top-notch letters of recommendation. You don't want to give the committee any, any doubt uh, about you and, and what other people think about you. Okay. Right? So yeah. that's a, that, so that, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a very, very good uh, question about letters of recommendation. Oh. I think that is, you've answered a lot of like my questions already. Yeah, I know. We've had a chance uh, doing the meet and mingle to kind of go over some things. And like I said, I think you just knocked it out of the park this weekend and networking and meeting people. Um, and uh, you've got some, some impressions days that you're going to be going to? D yes, I do. Where, where are you going? So on the 30th, um, is it the 30th um, of March, I will be going to um, Nashville, to Meharry. And I did see um, a, a date for Tufts in April. However, their, um, the online showing says that it's booked, but I am going to try to reach out. You know, some people end up canceling to just try to see if I can attend. If not, I'm going to try to go on my own. Yeah. It's not too far. Um, and then try to reach out to other few programs. I've already visited UIC um, back home, but I went to go visit over the break. So that was very good. Yeah, I would I would just show up at the Tufts one because you're right. People do cancel at the last minute, and you can be right there at the door, like, okay, I'm next. Yeah. <laughs> you know, show that drive and that initiative that you know that you're still willing to do whatever it takes to get there to to get that information to meet and mingle with people. So I would do that. So look, Lauren, let's stay in contact. I I, I think I know you're definitely on the right path. Um, and you're going to be taking the DAT pretty soon too, right? Yes. Yeah, just make sure with that DAT prep that you get a chance to do a lot of exams. You want to start doing as many exams as possible. Make sure they're timed as well. And make sure that you're able to kind of create and simulate that That's that you're going to be taking the exam in. And one thing with you saying that I, I recommend to everyone in, when it comes to simulating that, um, I never even paid attention to it. We all are so used to, you know, being on our laptops and being able to be on the go, but having a portable mouse because portable your mouse. exam is not like your laptop. It's you have a mouse pad. So that's um, something that I definitely didn't realize. Like it is completely different. Like that is a time difference versus using your hand um, on your keypad and using a mouse pad so yeah yeah because you got to put the mouse down you know write your little answers on your cheat sheet then grab the mouse again to do it so uh, there you go that's the bonus tip for all those you for all of you that have been listening and listen right out to the end that's why you always gotta listen listen to the end of all these videos you get some bonuses make sure you practice using the portable mouse because that's what you that's what you're going to be doing when you take this at the uh, at the test center so lauren hey Good luck to you. Let's stay in contact. And was that helpful? Yes. Thank you very um, much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I want to hear some feedback from you all. You tell me what you think about, about this video and whether or not how it was helpful uh, to you. Uh, that's the question of the day. What part of this video did you like the best? And just put your answers down here and comments down below. Also, check out this next video that's coming up right here right here and right there check out those two videos and they will help you too all right lauren let's stay in contact and good luck have a good uh, rest of the spring semester thank you so much take right, care bye-bye